Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today's video is something that I've been wanting to talk about for quite some time and that is the Polymega Games Console. Now the Polymega is a system that was announced back in 2017 under the name Retroblox. After numerous delays, design changes and a rebrand to Polymega, it would eventually be officially released in 2021. But again, thanks to numerous delays of varying types, the company behind it, Play Magic, have had something of an issue getting the systems manufactured and into the hands of waiting customers. As an example of this, I ordered my system all the way back in December of 2021 after reading some pretty glowing reviews of it. It had a promised delivery day of June of that year. It would not be until February 14th of this year, some two and a bit years later, that I would actually receive the system. Now, I'll touch on that a little bit more later, but first, let's talk about what the Polymega actually is. Now, put simply, the Polymega is a modular games console that has been created as a means to easily play older games on modern setups. It's not dissimilar to numerous other retro systems that have been released over the years, but I think what makes this one stand out more is the range of systems it can support and its modular design. Typically, one of these systems might support one console or a family of consoles. As an example, uh, a Sega focused one might do the Master System and the Mega Drive, but also all region games for those systems. Or a Nintendo one will focus on the NES and SNES with functionality for the Famicom, Super Famicom, and you know, US, Europe. Um, Fought region games. Now, the Polymega can, again, owing to its design, support a wide number of systems across a number of generations. So, you start with what you've got here, the base unit, and this supports CD-based media for a, a number of systems, including the Mega CD, the PlayStation, the Sega Saturn, there's like TurboGrafx CD, Neo Geo CD, and I think a couple more on there. And what makes it unique is that you can slide out the front of the base unit and swap in one of a number of optional element modules based on the system that you desire. Now, as of making this video, there's a module that supports the NES slash Famicom. However, the caveat is that the Famicom requires you to get the Famicom adapter for it, which I think is like a third party adapter. It's been around for quite a while. It's not unique to Polymega. Uh, there's a module for the SNES slash Super Famicom, you've got a module there for the Mega Drive, or as the Americans call it, the Genesis, it also supports 32X games, if anyone happens to have 32X stuff, there's a Turbo Graphics slash PC Engine module in there, and most recently there is a module for N64 games, so... What happens is you get the module, it'll come and it'll have the appropriate slot for that system's media and also a controller based off of the system that it has been made for. So, let's dive in and take a bit of a closer look. Well, first of all, visually, I really like the design of the system. It's fairly small, it's lightweight, it's sleek, and quite elegant. It's also um, got a bit of tactility to it. You've got actual buttons here for the power and the CD eject, which is something I do like. It's a very minor thing, but I was never really a fan of that generation where console manufacturers seem to get rid of buttons in favor of lightly grazing your finger over it and the console powers on and makes loud noises. Uh, I just like having an actual button there. In particular, I'm looking at you, one particular generation of the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 for that one. Now, on the front of the system, you've got a CD tray here. It's open design, you just slide the disc in. Very similar to what you see on most consoles nowadays. There's no tray that ejects here. Not really that bothered by that. However, I do feel that unlike the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X, you have to kind of push the CD in a little bit further before it grabs hold of it. It's not been a problem. It takes discs and ejects them fine, but it just feels like you have to push it in a little bit further. There are two slots on the front as well for USB devices. Um, I tend to use the universal controller that came with the system, so you've got a wireless dongle for that, which leaves me with just the one USB device. On the back of your console, you've got a standard power port for you know the power supply to go in there. You've got a HDMI out, an Ethernet port, and you've got a slot here for the micro SD card. 
On the bottom of the system, right here, you have an unscrewable tray that allows you to fit your own NVMe SSD into the system. And this is perhaps my first complaint about the system itself. Very easy to get this tray out, but within that there is a screw that you have to remove to make sure you can secure the SSD down. This screw was in incredibly tight, so I just advise if you are going to put an SSD in here, and I would definitely recommend doing so, just be careful that you've got the right screwdriver. Be you know sure that you are being absolutely careful with it so that you don't strip the screw or damage anything. Now, on the side of the console, there is a button here, and you, what you do is you push that in, it allows you to eject the module, and then you slot in your new ones. With the base unit, you get what PlayMagic have called their Universal Controller. It's based off of that, you know, classic, very common PlayStation design you'll see across a number of other third-party controllers out there. It feels very much like a PS4 controller in terms of its weight and size. I actually... I really do like this and it does well for the vast array of games that the Polymega actually supports. But I do feel like for the N64 or the Saturn, because their controller layouts are maybe just a little bit different, you might want something that's going to match those systems a little bit more. Now, fortunately, the Polymega, while it does come with this controller, it does support a wide range of third party controllers. But you will probably have to look at compatibility lists to just be sure that what you get does work. And as I mentioned before, your element modules do come with controllers that mirror the console that it's working for. So you will get uh, the NES one comes with a NES style controller, the N64 one comes with an N64 style controller, but for a little bit of a different design there. But generally, I think this has been a really nice controller. I've used it quite extensively for the games I've been playing. It's comfortable, lightweight, sits well in the hands, buttons are very nice to press, tactile, that kind of thing. Um, I've got no real problems with it. Um, so, yeah, aesthetically, I think it's quite lovely. It's a very simple design. It doesn't take up too much space. The console is lightweight, makes it very easy to transport, which for me is really, really great because I travel back and forth to England quite a lot to visit my parents, to see friends. So it's, it's perfect for that. In fact, I've already... Uh, just the other week taking it down to friends places to play and show them around it and you know, it fit in my bags really really nicely um, Now moving on to your modules for the modules design is roughly the same for each one. Now, let me just go and grab them so Yep design is very much the same for each one. You've got a cartridge slot which matches the system It's for so as an example here. We've got module EM04 which is for PC engine um, turbo graphics and that and you've got the slot at the front for their um, for their media and you've got ports here for the controllers so yeah and let me just find it as well all of them tend to come with two parts as the systems would have done with the exception of the n64 module which has four parts mirroring the actual systems design which means um, oh, and all the parts as well are the same ones that they would use. So you can use the original controllers if you do actually have them, which is quite handy. Uh, but as mentioned as well, Polymega do pack in a controller and you can buy more. Now, in most cases, the controllers do mirror the systems, therefore, with the exception of the N64 controller. With the N64 controller, they've gone for a design which feels a little bit like the Sega Saturn 3D pad, but with the buttons laid out like they were on the N64. Instead of mimicking that three-pronged style of the original N64 pad. I actually think it makes the pad feel suitable for Sega Saturn games, and for anyone coming to the N64 for the first time, it feels a little bit more like a common controller. I don't mind the changes to it, it feels a bit more natural to hold than the classic one, but I wasn't raised with the N64 controller, I'm not really particular about it. If you are a diehard N64 fan, maybe you won't be a fan of it, but I think it, um, I think it's fine. I think it's, it's really, really nice. As with the Universal, all the controls feel quite lightweight. They feel really nice to use. They sit well in the hand. Um, so yeah, um, aesthetically, really, really lovely system. Controllers feel really nice to use. It's got everything you need there from that standpoint. But that's only a small part of this. 
What I guess you'll probably want to know is what's it like when it's switched on? How does it play the games you're going to be using? You're going to be using for it. So when you switch on the Polymega, you are greeted with the home UI, which to be absolutely honest, I love this. And what you're seeing right now on screen is my system after installing a good variety of games to it. It's very crisp, very clean, numerous ways to get to the games that you want to play. Across the top, you see all the systems you have games installed for. You go into one of the menus, you see all the games you have installed for that system. And one of the things I do love here as well is if, I, if we select a game, Play Magic actually curates a, has created a database of games. So we can see appropriate information on the game, such as a neat little synopsis, the year of release, the developer, and the publisher. Underneath this, we have several further lists featuring similar games, games from the same developer or publisher, games released in the same year. And this is really cool because it could help inspire your next purchase. Of course, the flaw in that is how volatile the second-hand gaming market can be at times. You know, wishlisting something is one thing, but then you actually have, actually have to track it down, which, as we know, in the case of some of these games, is neither easy nor is it cheap. But having that feature there is neat. And if PlayMagic manages to get their online store off the ground, who knows what gems might end up there. Now, further to this, the system also maintains some auto-generated playlists for games you've recently installed or recently played, allowing you to jump back in from the main screen with ease. There is support there for creating your own playlists. Now, I've made a few to cover the, the Sonic games, Star Wars games, wrestling games. I've even got a playlist here dedicated to just Rareware titles. It's truly wonderful. And fair play to play Magi for putting in the effort to craft this interface and maintain the database. Because I think for so many, the ability to just install and play your physical media would have been enough. But I think this is above and beyond the expectations. Now, how do you install the games? It's fairly simple. You insert the game you want in the CD slot or in your module. In most cases, it will be detected by the system, matched up with the database, and then you can install it. The only issue, um, in, and this is on the hardware side of things, is that the cartridge slots can feel a little bit snug. This is especially noticeable, I think, with the Mega Drive module. So, what I would say in that case, some of the advice given is um, unplug the module, leave a game in overnight to kind of loosen it up. I've not really had too many problems myself with taking out and putting in the games, but it does feel a little bit snug. It might feel a little bit frightening when you pop it in there for the first time. So just be aware of that and be careful. The other thing, and this isn't really a hardware thing, um, the Polymega isn't 100% compatible. They are patching it, they are adding stuff all the time. I've not really had too many problems with it, uh, but the N64, um, I've, I've had two games not be detected by the N64, and that is um, Jet Force Gemini, and Lilac Wars. I believe the Lilac Wars issue is fine if you're playing the American version, which of course is Star Fox 64, but for some reason Lilac Wars is not seen as compatible. Um, I've had a few games as well refuse to install, but that is more because the discs themselves are absolutely buggered, you know, they're scratched to hell. Um, that's more of a, a, a me issue, kind of didn't check them when I purchased them. But generally what will happen in those cases is that it'll try to install the game, but it might get to a certain point where it just spits it out and goes, no, we can't do this. So that's not necessarily, that part isn't really a problem with the system, but it is something maybe to be aware of. Um, this is an ongoing thing, maintain this database, so they're adding new compatibility to it all the time. And some games you've got to, you know, either look at cleaning them if they don't install, or they might just be completely buggered if they're a CD and they've got too many scratches. So, how do the games themselves actually play though? Well, in the weeks since I got my system through to now, I've had a, the opportunity to play a fair number of games across all the systems I collect for. I've tackled some SNES stuff, some Mega Drive stuff, PS1, Saturn, and N64, and I've not really been able to find any faults with it. 
The only thing that has popped up is that sometimes the first play or so of an N64 game might perform a little bit poorly. However, what Playmagic have done is that after the first play of an N64 game, they have bespoke patches which are downloaded to your system that will improve the performance of the game in subsequent plays. So whilst I had issue with the first play of, let's say, Rogue Squadron, um, after playing it you know, for a second and third time, absolutely no issues whatsoever. Beyond that, every other game I've played has ran incredibly well, and it's nice to know that... I have access to all these modern conveniences while I'm playing these games. I've got the save states there. I can take screenshots easily. I can add game shark codes if I wanted to. And in the case of a game like Densha de Go, I can download the English translation patch, pop it on a USB stick, and load that so I can play the game translated, even though it's you know the Japanese cartridge there. Um, the only major issue here is the size of the collection. Cheeky little bit of choice paralysis when figuring out what it is I want to play next. But just to show you how some of the systems were on, I've popped in a little bit of footage from across my collection. So, look and aesthetic of the system, we're good. Usability, very, very good. And they play in the games, they run really well. So far, the Polymega definitely hits each of the key things that I wanted from it. So, would I recommend the system? The answer is a little bit more complicated because there's a few things I need to address. First of all, this is an expensive product. Thanks to inflation, manufacturing costs over the last couple of years, the base unit itself is about £400. An optional module will set you back about £60 to £70. Pounds. That's not including your shipping and import taxes. The Deluxe Bundle, which contains the base unit and the first four modules, can cost you about £640, pounds, which is obviously cheaper than if you were to buy them all individually, but that's still a hefty chunk of change. For what it's worth when I ordered, it was significantly cheaper. But as I said, inflation, manufacturing costs have gone up. Secondly, Playmagy as a company have not necessarily been in my good books as far as communication goes. When it comes to delays and getting the product in our hands, this has been a problem over the last couple of years since I ordered it. Now, I want it to be known, I think the Polymaker is brilliant. It's lovely. The emulation that it uses is fantastic. The interface is wonderful. I love this console. But at the end of the day, Play Magi took more than two years to get this system to me. And I'm not overly happy with that. And I know there are people who have placed their order 
before me who are still waiting to get theirs. And there was even a time last year when their social media and customer service went completely unresponsive for months. We were completely in the dark about any delays or issues. There were even a number of us who thought the company might have dead, right, have died. And quite frankly, that is not good enough. This is not an issue with just playing Magi. There are a few companies that operate in the video game space that do specialist hardware, specialist software releases, special merchandise, who craft really wonderful products, but your customer facing side is really bad. Now, there are signs that Play Magi are improving on this side. The systems are going out at a faster rate. Their social media presence has improved and their customer service has become very active again, responding to people really quickly. So I do believe they are improving. That said, I don't feel like I would be being responsible if I did not mention these issues I have had since ordering the system. So my stance is this. Yes, I love this system and what it can do. But... I don't know if I could in good faith recommend it 100% because of those problems. Now, if anything, this little bit here is a plea, not just to play Magi, but to all of these companies operating in these spaces, please, please work on improving your communications and customer-facing side of things. Please communicate out about delays and issues. Yes, there are going to be a number of people who will get annoyed when there's a delay or whatever. But I think more of us will appreciate knowing what is going on. And it'll help ease all of our anxiety. So please just do better. Now the conclusion. Polymega is a wonderful system. It does everything I wanted. It maybe does more. It does it really, really well. The high price point maybe does push it from being a product for the casual retro gamer to... The, or the enthusiast level, but I also think the ease of use makes it very, very appealing. The one caveat, aforementioned problems with shipping them out. Now, if Play Magi have really turned a corner with their stock levels and shipping, then I absolutely do recommend this system. So, I, you know, like I say, really, really love this thing. If they have solved those problems, I would definitely, if you are into retro gaming, 100% look at getting one of these on your shelves. So, with all of that said, I just wanted to say thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll hopefully see you again in a future video. Goodbye.